All across Europe, several mind-boggling megaprojects are presently under construction. Although they have not gotten the hype on the internet like those in Asia, these projects will leave you questioning everything you previously thought were the limits of possibility. The magnitude of these constructions is astounding, and the money being spent on them is unbelievable. An example is the $19 billion that has been set aside for Horn C3 and 4. Well, today, we will take a look at a few of Europe's biggest mega projects that are currently under construction and, when completed, will change our perspective on the world, literally reshaping our globe. We begin with the Hinkley Point C Nuclear Power Station, HPC. Named after its location at Hinkley Point in Somerset, England, Hinkley Point C, HPC, makes its mark as the UK's first third-generation nuclear power plant. You can imagine the burden it holds, providing zero-carbon electricity for around 6 million homes, jobs for 22,000 people, training for 8,000 people in the center of excellence, and conservation of 9 million metric tons of CO2. Looking at the 3D model of this station, it could be described as being made up of two units, each with an EPR design and a whopping 3,200 megawatt electric capacity. But there's a backstory to this amazing electricity generating project. You see, when the government proposed this project, several protest groups, including Alliance Against Hinkley C and Stop Hinkley, began pressing for the government to focus instead on the development of renewable energy systems and alerting the public to the harm to the environment. Opposition continued, but none deterred the construction of Hinkley Point C in 2016 after receiving a nuclear site license in November 2012. It is expected to be completed by 2031 at a cost of up to $46 billion at 2024 pricing. Next on our list is 11B, Stuttgart 21. This is Germany's huge transportation development project to completely overhaul the city's current rail infrastructure. How would they do this? By redeveloping Stuttgart Central Station and the surrounding railway tracks. It may look like a mean feat, judging from the map of the project, but it stands at an estimated cost of $11 billion. The project basically involves underground work and rotating the entire train station by an unbelievable 90 degrees. By completing this, the city will join a direct train route between Paris and Budapest, enhancing connectivity throughout Europe. That is not all. It will connect Stuttgart Airport to the long-distance rail network, transferring traffic from the road to the rail, and drastically shorten travel times to 28 minutes as opposed to the 1 hour and 49 minutes it takes to reach Ulm Stuttgart Airport. Aside from its benefits, the design is exceptional since it calls for the construction of 28 massive chalice-shaped pillars, each weighing 350 metric tons of steel and 685 cubic meters of concrete to support the new station. To top that, 10 acres of public space and 23 massive glass domes will cover the station, allowing light and fresh air to enter, even though it is subterranean. Unfortunately, difficulties have arisen during the project planning phase, Due to yet another delay, the completion date was recently rescheduled for December 2026, which is twice as expensive and seven years later than originally anticipated. Nevertheless, Stuttgart 21 will be a convenient and efficient transport network that will improve the quality of life for its residents when it is completed. The next project on our list is the Stadship Tunnel. Due to its erratic winds and weather, Norway's Stadhavet Sea has, throughout history, been considered a very dangerous place for sailors. Even the Vikings would drag their boats across the terrain rather than sail through it. These days, before attempting to pass, the majority of ships wait several days for the waves to settle down. To ease these worries, the Norwegian Coastal Administration has drawn up plans to construct the first full-size ship tunnel in history to improve safety for vessels passing through the region. By slicing through the Stad Peninsula, the Stad ship tunnel will avoid the hazardous Stad of at sea and save travelers up to two hours of trip time, with dimensions of 1.8 kilometers long, 50 meters wide, and 36 meters high. 
This tunnel will have the capacity to hold up to 120 ships per day, including cruise ships and full-size oil tankers. In 2021, the Stadship Tunnel was finally approved by the Norwegian government and they set aside a budget above a staggering $272 million to bring it to fruition. Now, we can only watch with keen eyes as we anticipate the start of construction scheduled to begin in 2024 to be completed in 2026. When this is done, the Stad Ship Tunnel will not only be an amazing engineering work, but become a creative step to solving the problems in maritime transportation. Traveling through the area will be safer and more effective, which will boost trade and the local economy both locally and internationally. Next up is the Horn C3 and 4 project. Second only to China, the UK is one of the world's top producers of offshore wind energy. The nation is home to four of the world's five largest offshore wind farms. Situated in the North Sea, 80 kilometers east of the English coast, the Hornsea Project's one and two wind farms are the biggest among them. The combined power output of these two farms is 2.6 gigawatts, more than enough to power 3 million homes in the United Kingdom. Their total area of 870 square kilometers is almost equivalent to half that of London. But the thing is, offshore wind farms in the UK still have a long way to go before they meet their 2030 target of producing 50 gigawatts of electricity, despite their size. This has resulted in the design and development of larger and more recent wind farms, such as Hornsea 3. Situated to the east of Hornsea 1, Hornsea 3 spans an area of 700 square kilometers. It's projected that 280 individual wind turbines will provide 2.8 gigawatts of power, more than Horn C1 and 2 put together. They didn't end it here. They went all out to plan for Horn Z4. In a bid to make it different from the rest while serving the same purpose, the wind farm will occupy 600 square kilometers of space northwest of Horn Z1. The construction is predicted to commence in 2027 and hopefully will end by 2028. In doing all these, the UK hopes to spontaneously boost its production of power using these wind farms, and in that way, get a durable supply of energy for its citizens. Next on our list is Flamanville 3. The Centrale Nucléaire de Flamanville is a nuclear power station located near the town of Flamanville in the northern French province of Normandy. But these aren't your typical nuclear power facilities. The power plant housed two pressurized water reactors, PWRs, with a combined output of 1.3 gigawatt electric. After its first commissioning, they somehow managed to employ 671 regular workers who helped produce 18.9 terawatt hours by 2005, thereby increasing France's total electrical output by 4%. On an average, this plant would last the French until 2036 and 2037, respectively. Given that the first two units of Flamanville's nuclear power plant they installed have been working since the mid-1980s. However, in 2007, they saw the need to construct a third plant to help the workload. Flamanville 3 was originally scheduled to be completed in 2012. Regrettably, there were numerous delays which extended the projected completion date and raised the cost of construction. The reasons behind the delays included inadequate funding, administrative challenges, disagreements between the different parties involved, a broken reactor control system, leaky joints, poor construction materials, modifications to the pressurized reactor's blueprint, and potential safety hazards throughout the building phase. It was intended for completion to take place in 2023 by November 2022. Some were right when they doubted that this would truly occur. Another round of delays was declared, pushing back fuel loading until early 2024. Currently, the estimated cost of the building as a whole is 12.7 million euros. Next up is European Route E39. Because of its steep mountains and thousands of small islands, Norway's coastal terrain makes navigation very challenging. The purpose of European Route E39 is to circumvent this issue by offering a route beside the Norwegian shore. If you take a quick drone trip, 
you would see that this Norwegian road is divided into many sides by large bodies of water, covering its whole length. So, if you wanted to navigate this, it would take you at least a day and you would need many ferry connections. The Norwegian government finally decided to construct one continuous route from Denmark to Norway via tunnels and bridges in order to reduce transportation time by half and so people do not need to jump from one ferry to another. A vital part of this renovation is the 15-kilometer Rogfast submarine tunnel, which links Boken and Stavanger. The tunnel would be the world's longest and deepest road tunnel at 27 kilometers in length and 400 meters below the surface. Construction on the tunnel began in 2018 with a completion date of 2033. But somehow, there was a catch. In order to make sure the E39 moves in one swift motion across some of Norway's biggest fjords, they have to construct four separate floating roadways to link it. These bridges, starting from Bjørnafjorden, will be at least 5 kilometers long and may even hold the record for the longest floating bridge in the world. On a whole, Norway's topography presents a navigation challenge, which the E39 improvement seeks to address by creating an accessible route along the whole coast. Now, driving from Denmark to Trondheim on a continuous route will be possible with the removal of ferry connections and the building of tunnels and bridges. As one of Norway's most ambitious infrastructure projects, it will need a large amount of money, estimated at $50 billion, and experience to complete. If implemented successfully, it would shorten travel times and increase tourist and economic growth in the area. The last project on our list is Energy Islands of Denmark. Given that Denmark developed the first offshore wind farm in history in 1991, the country is a leader in offshore wind farm technology. Because of this, Denmark produces the greatest percentage of its electricity from wind power worldwide. Denmark is about to embark on its largest building project in order to produce clean and renewable energy. By 2030, Denmark hopes to have constructed the first ever energy islands in history, linking massive offshore wind farms to both its neighbors and itself. The North and Baltic Seas will host two sizable offshore wind projects owned by the Energy Islands. With a maximum capacity of 10 gigawatts, this facility will be the first of its kind in the world, sufficient to supply the energy needs of 10 million households in Europe. The second hub, with a 3 gigawatts capacity, will be the Baltic island of Bornholm. When finished, the Energy Islands might boost Denmark's wind energy output by up to seven times. The project is anticipated to start construction as early as 2024 and end around 2030. To achieve this, investments of 9 billion euros, including 3 billion euros for the electrical infrastructure and 6 billion euros for the construction of the wind farm, have been put in. By doing this, Denmark is seeking to bolster its renewable energy policies and demonstrate to the world that clean and renewable energy can be achieved even on a large scale by constructing the first ever energy islands. These and many more projects are underway in Europe, with the intention of improving the lives of its citizens. What do you think of these projects? In your opinion, are they making sensible financial decisions? Tell us in the comments section below. As always, we appreciate your likes and support and hope to see you in our next video.